Good morning, folks. Let's get right into it this weekend. Sun might be quiet, but there are things to discuss from twice as far away down to the land beneath our feet. So let's kick off at spaceweathernews.com, checking out the last day on our star. Our eyes are drawn to the large coronal hole, but the long, thin filament to the north of the leading edge is a major eruption threat today. Three bright active regions in a triangle around them. Haven't really been able to overcome the Earth-facing quiet, have they, though? Solar flaring remains low, as only one sunspot group is worth watching at the moment. There is something about it, though, which makes me excited for the possibilities. The delta potential where blue is creeping in on the lead negative umbra is where any flaring would be taking place. And if you can see how the fields only want to connect to opposite polarities, then you can imagine what throwing a blue dot on the right side might do to those Neptune-sized fields. Well, you don't have to imagine because one of the best Deeper Look episodes from last year has been made public. You can search this title or just find the link in today's list. Essentially, when the fields are arching across the sunspot, all that matters is what's underneath. That video shows how flare sequences can be predictable up to hours in advance using just this type of scenario. Back at Earth, where seven days of solar wind telemetry from Discover shows the coronal hole stream impact in yellow, shooting the speed upward, and then it waning away now, all calm in Earth's magnetic field. The coronal holes facing Earth will set another stream that should get here on Monday, but we'll be looking at more seismicity as the core of the interplanetary magnetic field opening gets round. Over the previous day, the only good stories beneath our feet were the Colima volcano erupting in Mexico, and a little missing Marvin of an earthquake nowhere near any major faults. Rare location there. Top stories today include a ghost nova that you cannot see with your eyes, but Hubble can see it in the X-ray spectrum. The cosmic jet signature is still hot, blue in the middle. Interesting comments on the page about Chinese folklore. Up next, We've got the Stereo Satellite Newsroom, where they've been updating the great news about Stereo B contact. You can get all the updates at the link provided, but I'll note that I hope this doesn't mean we're without images until 2022, because that would not be cool. Let's go to the weather, where Gaston in the Atlantic is watching twin systems developing towards the U.S. East Coast out ahead of them. It's looking more and more like Louisiana is under the gun once again, as the Carolinas, Maryland, and Virginia need to start paying attention as well. East Pacific, never the one to be left out. Two of her own. Both systems are looking as though they're heading for Hawaii, albeit one of them a few days behind. Well, folks, from flooding in Indianapolis to hailstones across the country, biggest recorded was three inches last night. We've got inundation, we've got pebble to golf ball size hail, much more widespread, and oh, the wind. Hopefully it'll be a lighter day in that arena here. It is Saturday, so we've got our Fly on the Wall podcast coming up in a few hours, but right now we've got pressure and radar forecast leading into shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.